Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. Glorified, exalted, and appraised is the name of the King, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, who rules over kings. The Holy One blessed is He, for He is the first and He is the last, and aside from Him there is no God. Exalt Him, who rides the highest heavens, with His name, Yah, and exalt before Him. His name is exalted beyond every blessings and praise. Blessed is the name of His glorious kingdom for all eternity. Blessed be the name of Yahweh from this time and forever. Heavenly Father, as I am standing before you with my prayer for all of those who are going to listen to this testimony, please bless all of us today with your truth and every spiritual aspect in our lives. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, I am asking you to give us understanding of your way, of your will, and of your power, of your love, and of your judgment. Let your word be living in our hearts, let your spirit be living in our hearts and in our mind, and let him guide our will. I pray, Heavenly Father, please remove our spiritual blindness from our eyes, spiritual deafness from our ears, spiritual darkness from our tongue, and spiritual paralysis and numbness from our senses. Let our spirits and souls be connected with your truth, and let any deception and lies be gone from us. Heavenly Father, let the wall of your spirit of truth surround us and protect us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your great love. Amen. When did this all begin? I remember one day many years ago when I was lonely. I just came to the Lord and did not have any close friends. Those who I had in the world left me because of my beliefs in Jesus Christ. I was praying for friend. Suddenly, I heard a quiet voice inside me, in my spirit. I want to be your friend. I knew that it was the Lord. Later I had many such experiences. The Lord talks to me in a different ways, through dreams and visions and through words of knowledge and prophecy. As a believer in Christ, I walk His way. It was not always easy. He is the knowledgeable jeweler who held me in His hand and polished all my roughness and imperfections. Sometimes it was painful because my sinful nature resisted His perfect will, but His love was overcoming me again and again. And when Satan tried to snatch me from his hand, the Lord held me tight. It is in one of these moments of my life when I saw myself in my spirit on a river bank. I knew that it was the river of living waters that comes from the throne of the Heavenly Father. 
My tired soul would rest in peace in this refreshing water. I often would submerge myself and would find unspeakable peace and bliss. Near the river was a tree. Its shadow would provide me with the shade and cover. I liked to sit under the tree and enjoy a refreshing breath of wind. I knew that this was the trend of the wind of the Holy Spirit. Yeshu often would come to me and we would talk to each other. One time he asked me, Do you trust me? This was a hard question for me. Did I trust him? At this time, I had lost my trust to everybody. I already lived through many disappointments in people, in their sincerity and honesty. After experiencing lots of betrayal at the hand of those who call themselves my friends and neighbors, I lost my trust for anybody. Sometimes I even began to doubt the love of Yeshua for me. When he asked me this question, I began to look deeply into myself. Did I trust him? Who else on the earth could I trust if not the Lord, who died for me and for my sins? I made the decision. He gave me his hand and I accepted it. Thus began my journey into the spiritual world of his kingdom. The Bible is telling us that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For me this word has become an everyday experience when his kingdom, his paradise, his heaven became very close in my spirit. The door, the heavenly portal was open. And now I was experience every day something new and wonderful. When I was in heaven in the spirit, I was standing and looking at the children who were aborted by their mothers. They were happy in the care and love of Heavenly Father. One girl came to me. She looked upon me and said, Be the voice for us on the earth. We were silent, but you are alive. Tell them everything about us. This is my testimony in the memory of all those who were killed and slaughtered by the hands of their mothers, in the memory of those who did not have the chance to have even one breath on the earth, who were murdered and whose life was stolen. I am the voice of the silent ones. When I was standing before the throne of God, I was taken into the past, into the very beginning of my life. I was seeing myself as an unborn child who was aborted by her mother. My lifeless body still was in her womb, but my soul was in the loving hands of the Father. Everything in heaven was prepared to accept me. My life, that had just started, was already over on the earth. Then, Heavenly Father asked me if I wanted to go back. He gave me a choice. I made a decision to come back. He resurrected me and gave me life. And now, as I was standing with Yeshua in heaven, I was shown what is happening to the children who are aborted by their mothers, are miscarried from the womb, or died just after birth. When an unborn child dies, the angels take their soul directly to the throne room of God. He is accepting them into his hands all the time with love and compassion. Day after day, minute after minute, second after second, every unborn soul is guided by the angels into his hands. After the fatherly love greeting in heaven, every unborn soul is appointed to a special nursery where angels and women saints take care of the souls to bring them to the maturity of a child. Every child has his own cradle with his name on it. I was taken to one of these nurseries. There were children as young as one day old from conception. Angels were very gentle with these souls. Many children's souls were extremely traumatized because of the act of abortion. The atmosphere was peaceful and healing. One angel came to me and showed me one cradle that was empty. I look and I saw my name on it. The cradle was made of wood crafted by the hands of one of the saints of God. It was beautiful and unique. The children are fed special angelic food, manna to nourish their soul to grow. There was a pool of living water in the nursery. 
Every baby in the nursery is gently taken by angels or woman and carried into this pool for full submersion into the waters. This was done for the healing and restoration of the souls. The living waters in heaven have power to restore soul and give life and peace. I asked if I could bring one of these babies into this water. They allowed me and so I gently took the baby's soul and went down the step of the pool. As I was walking down, I understood that these waters were needed for me as much as for this baby. Slowly I submerged myself under the water. In heaven living waters do not drown, they are a source of life. You can breathe under water as well. I walked on the bottom of the pool to the other side and went up the steps. Then they gave me six more baby souls, one by one, to bring them into the living waters. I realized that going into this pool seven times was necessary for me to restore my soul. I asked the angels if I could taste the food they are given to the babies. They offered me some. It was one of the most wonderful foods I have ever tasted in heaven. When a baby is mature enough to walk and talk, he is appointed by God to adoptive families. If a child has any family members in heaven, he is appointed to this person. Usually aborted children are appointed to a family of already mature saints who were also aborted. God created every human to be grown and mature among their own kind, not among the angels. Angels do minister to the children, but their influence is limited. God provides through adoptive power everything for a child to be fully a human being. This includes social relationship as a family, because God created families to be a basic foundation for human society. As a child grows and matures through the relationship of his adoptive mother and father, he learns the concept of who Heavenly Father is, about His love, and about His nature. Couples who died in the Lord keep the relationship in Christ in heaven. The level of this relationship is different. There is no sexual relationship in heaven for the souls who have no bodies. I notice that these large groups of aborted souls live together in common communities. They are bonded by their past. I was also revealed that this very large group of souls have a special plan from Heavenly Father at the end of days. I also was shown that when they reach the maturity of a man, they go through a special training for future end-time warfare against the evil ones. I was shown many wonderful things, and one time I was taken to a family who were appointed to take me in if I would choose to stay in heaven when I was aborted. My adoptive father is my uncle, who was aborted by my grandmother on my father's side. He is a mighty warrior of God, and his ministry in heaven is to train little boys in a spiritual warfare. One time I saw his students with a small little swords in their hands. These swords are real, spiritual swords for battle fitting just right in the little hand of a child. His adoptive children were happy to see me, and they showed me my room in their mansion. The room was full of flowers as every child would bring something as a gift from their heart to decorate it. They let me know that their home is always welcome for me, and that I have a big family in heaven that is waiting for my coming. Many believe that in heaven there is no age, and they believe that when a child dies, in heaven they are immediately fully grown and mature people, but this is not completely true. Every man has three parts, spirit, soul, and body. The spirit of man comes from God. It has the power of life that comes only from the Father. When the new DNA is created through conception, the spirit enters into this new cell with the new DNA, and the power of life like a flash of light creates a new soul. The soul becomes eternal. The soul then begins to grow in the physical body in the mother's womb. 
Because of the Adamic sin, the spirit of a child becomes separated from God. A person's days of life are given through the spirit as a gift from God. It has the energy of life that originated from God. Originally, people did not supposed to be separated from God, from the source of life, but sin separates every person at the moment of conception. Later, as a child grows, this energy of life can be depleted through sickness and the sins that allow demons to be attached to a child. They are like parasites feeding on the energy of life that they cannot access unless through the curses and open doors of sin. When the demons are cast out, they go around in the dry places, trying to find another person who still has this life in him, and then slowly sucking him down day after day, year after year. When a person is in sin, this energy of life is wasted through sin and demonic spiritual vampirism. When a person becomes born again, his spirit reconnects to the source of life, and when a person dies, his soul leaves the dead physical body and then enters into the heavenly kingdom of God. The reborn spirit became a vessel where the human soul operates and communicates in heaven. In John chapter 3 verses 5 and 6, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a man is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. A person can manifest himself in heaven in the spirit which has no age, or in the soul which has no age but a level of maturity. The growth of the person is not limited on the number of years. A child could grow faster in heaven than on the earth. Some unborn children desire so much to be with their earthly mothers that they will do not grow into full maturity because they are waiting for their mothers to come to heaven and to raise them. Such children live in a special place, a village, where angels take care of them until one of their parents come to heaven. Each of these children have their own cottage with a garden around it. This village is located near the throne of God in the middle of the New Jerusalem. Not far from this village is the beautiful Garden of God. It is the favorite place of all children in heaven. The soul never stops maturing. This is the eternal process to reach a full knowledge of the Father and His eternal love. After all, it will take for us an eternity to fully reflect Him in us like the image of God. There are more people in heaven that never had chance to live than those who live and came to Christ during their life. What number are we talking about? Let's say for the sake of the argument. There are about 40 million abortions every year in the whole world. It is the official number. This number does not include early or late miscarriages or miscarriages that happen because of birth control pills during the first day of conception. This number does not include children who died during or soon after birth. The number of unborn children could be twice as big as the official number. But for the sake of the argument, I will take this number and go from this. At this rate, in 10 years, there will be 400 million abortions. In 20 years, 800 million. In 100 years, 4 billion children had never been born. How many children were aborted in miscarriage during the last 6,000 years? Only God knows. I ask God, why does Satan want to kill children that were not born yet? Why would pagan society sacrifice children to idols and their pagan gods? Who benefits from their death? The Holy Spirit guided me to the book of Enoch, where I found who told this art of abortion. The fifth is named Kasadia. It is he who revealed to the children of the people the various flagellation of all evil, the flagellation of the souls and the demons, the smashing of the embryo in the womb so that it may be crushed, the fallen watchers. 
are responsible for the beginning of abortion in the first place. They had hidden knowledge that they used for their own evil purpose. There is a connection between Nephilim and abortion. The fallen watchers who mated with human women taught them to do abortion of the unborn. I find out that in Hebrew, the word Nephil, which produces the plural form for Nephilim, has the same root letters as the word Nafal. Nafal is translated into English as untimely birth or idiomatic expression for the death of unborn child or miscarriage, abortion. This connection in Hebrew is not coincidental. Satan does not have any life. He can bring only death. He cannot create life, but instead steals it from God and the human race. Bible says about Satan in John 8.44 You are of the devil as father, and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and did not abide in the truth, because there is no truth in him. In John 10.10 10, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I cannot tell all the details. Some things are hidden knowledge for us. But I have strong conviction that there are connections between the mass slaughter of the unborn babies and the breeding programs of non-human hybrids. Scientists have discovered that when a baby is in embryo stage, it contains powerful properties and they wrongly use it in the evil research by killing many human beings. By doing this, they are putting the curse of God upon themselves, because it is common knowledge that stem cells can be obtained from the umbilical cord of already born child, and that there is no need to destroy life. There is an ancient pagan hidden secret when many women and men who wanted to rejuvenate and bring usefulness to themselves would kill an unborn child or a newborn child, and then use its body for their beauty and health being like a cannibals. In Russia, one woman witnessed and exposed a very hard truth. She expected a child and went to the doctor for an ultrasound check. She noted that every single woman in the line would come out from the doctor's office in tears. When it was her turn, the doctor told her that the child was dead and sent her to the clinic to remove the body. The woman did not believe him and soon enough found another doctor who told her that the child was well and alive. There is a trend in countries like Russia, China, Ukraine and others. Special abortion clinics pay doctors to lie to women, telling them that their unborn children are dead. Then if a woman believes them, she performs abortion unknowingly to her, thinking that she is just removing the dead body. I want to mention that God made a woman's body in such a way that if an unborn child is dead, it is itself cleansed the body through miscarriage. Sometimes, like in my case, if the body is still inside the womb, God can resurrect the child back to life. It has become a big business to harvest human embryos and then to pull them through a mixer and then to sell it to the rich people in the western countries for big money. Many celebrities and rich people use this material to retain their usefulness. In the cosmetic industry, they are using so-called collagen. There are different sources of collagen. Some of it comes from the sea animals, others from the skin of cows, pigs or sheep. But there is a collagen that comes from aborted fetuses. Of course, source of this kind of collagen is the company's secret. And it's very difficult to know if the cream you are spreading on yourself every day in fact may have parts of aborted babies. But ignorance does not minimize the responsibility for using such creams or other cosmetic products. This kind of cosmetic products is cursed with a curse of death. And if you don't know 100% that your cream or other cosmetic products does not have the secret ingredient, then you need to repent, stop using it, and pray so that the curse of death can be broken over you 
in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. But it is not the main reason why Satan is killing so many babies. He is on a limited time to build himself an army of half-breeds, non-human beasts, who are going to be revealed in the end times. They are going to terrorize all human population on the earth during the last day of the final countdowns. The biggest revelation I receive is that God is building his special army from those who were aborted, whose life was stolen by Satan. There will be a war between the angels of God and the fallen angels. But this special group is training specifically to bring destruction to all hybrid beasts that will be on the earth, which will be millions and millions of them. They will bring their vengeance against these hybrids. The Bible calls these hybrids Rephaim, who will never be resurrected. The Antichrist and the false prophets will be these human look-alike hybrid beasts. This is why when Yeshua comes, he will cast them alive into the lake of fire before the judgment of the white throne because they are non-humans. In a vision I saw Satan on his throne. He was surrounded with countless number of hybrid beasts, an army that is ready to invade the land. And before the throne were Antichrist and false prophet, two beasts. They looked like superhumans, but their nature was like a beast. The whole alien scheme is just one of the kind of beasts that are genetically modified to look as human as possible. We live in a time when the veil between the physical and spiritual world is fading. It is the transitional time when Satan is trying to condition people for the appearance of these entities. It will be a time like it was never before in the history of mankind. It will be a living hell and terror of the, on the earth during the tribulation time. But I have some comfort and good news. God has special forces in His army. He is preparing them right now. And they are the ones who are going to counter these evil entities on the earth in a very wonderful way. It will be a real spiritual battle during this time. And people during the tribulation are going to witness it with their own eyes. It will be also a time of big terror and fear among the unsaved. I was asked to become the voice of the silent ones. I am the one who was there and came back to defy Satan and death for the glory of Heavenly Father. And this is the word that I received through the Holy Spirit. Behold, all inhabitants of the earth, the time has come to be judged. My spirit is searching for a righteous heart who is vexed with all the abominations of this world. The angels of judgment are among you right now with scales on their hands. They are waiting every person who is on the earth and are measuring them according to their righteousness or according to their unrighteousness. This is the day when the decision is going to be made for the nations of the earth. Repent of your sins and humble before the Creator of the whole universe. Enough! The age of my grace for the nations is ending. There will be the last call to all the nations of the earth to repent and to come to me. I will shake the hearts of people. They will turn their eyes to me and will not ignore me anymore. But those who will miss the day of great repentance will go through the turbulent time like never before on the earth. I will give you up to your master, the prince of this world. I will give you up to your idols and to your sins. You will cry, and I will not hear you because you did not heed me at the time of my visitation. As you slaughter my little ones in the dark and hidden places, I will send my avengers to slaughter you in the same way as you did to them. An eye for an eye, an arm for an arm, a life for a life. And those who think that they can cannibalize my little ones for their vanity and usefulness. Behold, you are cursed with the curse of a dead. 
Your beauty will become burnt scars, full of boils and uncleanliness. Your usefulness will fail you in one day, and you will be among the weak and helpless, sick and rejected. But my eyes are on the ones who are willing to heed to my voice and to submit themselves under my will. Be strong and do not be afraid. I, the Most High God, will be with you. Be faithful and you will be rewarded. I will send you my angels to protect you, to guide you and to comfort you. Be in my peace and do not be afraid. Trust me with all your heart, with all your mind and with all your strength. Behold, I am coming to judge the whole earth. And this is the word to the evil ones, Sarebe Shalarege San Takata Katara Meshalarebefen, O fallen ones, Sarebe Shalabe Karemekode Nesan Dekiditeden. Go and tell your master, Go Sharebe Kasan Terebe Karebe Shalore Mekaten, the time has come, Barebe Shalarebe Kazan Tegesin Degesen. Remember the hand and the writings on the wall, Barega Shalare Lady, the Sen Katarebe Shalamen. Men and men tackle, men and men tackle, men and men tackle like our religion, terrible religion. This is the final. Let the bekar and the karu the best and the kezen. The army is prepared and the bride is ready. Rebecca shall let the best and the kezen Eden. The battle will be soon. The karaga sunama shall let the bekenen. I have the finest army of those who you refused in this world. Let the best shall let the karaga san the kezen. There are my mighty warriors. The lions who are ready to roar, a paragar in the center, guess and the guessen. You silence them, but they will return their might and their strength. Serebe shalarebe kara ne kara liyem. You will face every one of them in the last battle of the ages. Serega sara le legesun derebe shalemen. Then they come in their new glorified bodies who will stand against them. Serega shalarebe kaze serebe shalamen. I am their father, rakara ne kara besen. Their Strength and in their might and the castle that they carry Nathan. They are the chosen one for such a time. Be the castle that they make and the mezzan. Behold, tremble and shake. Are the coremen the coremen nizin? The small voice that I send now will begin your end. The calm and mezzan the fusion. There will be many voices to come. Be the castle that they be carry Nathan. I will send my two witnesses to testify about my judgment. Are the castle that they be castle that men in. Be prepared to meet your. Final destiny in the lake of fire, the gasson der shula baregasenen. Behold, I proclaim, and it will be done. Tere mashalare bekare mesan to gudu kure mashalale yu ya bashalale gisan te besan tere besan te kesan te kesan. This is the call of God's army. Mika mocha ve elim Adonai. Mika mocha ni dar ba kodesh no rate hilot o sefile. Mika mocha be elim Adonai. Mika mocha ni dar ba kodesh no rate hilot o sefile. Mika mocha be elim Adonai. Who is like your Lord among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness? Fearful in praises, doing wonders. Who is like you, Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness? Fearful in praises, doing wonders. Who is like you, Lord, among the gods?
I wanted to end my testimony with these words, but the Holy Spirit wanted me to share one more vision that I have some time ago. This vision was so terrible that I did not want to share it. I was taken in the spirit to the one of the underground secret facilities. As I was standing there, I saw many walls of these hybrid bodies that were growing in some kind of liquid. Rows and rows of these walls were in a very big space. The Holy Spirit told me that these bodies are corrupted, genetically modified hybrids that are growing in some kind of breeding program. But to bring these bodies to life, they need the powerful force of creation that comes only from God. When God creates every single human being, He releases this force into the bodies of the human embryos. But this force can be stolen by killing an unborn child, taken to have their own children, children of darkness that have no light nor God's eternal destiny in them. Then I was taken to another place. I saw lots of cages with many people in them. Like in the horror movies, they were experienced many terrible experiments and seen many terrible things. They all had been kidnapped. I was really revealed that many of these people were illegal immigrants who came to U.S. They were easy targets, especially children, because their mass disappearance no one will notice. There in underground secret facilities exist very terrible giant hybrids. They are very bloodthirsty and after the human flesh. And like in the story of Greek Minotaur, when the king had to send people for sacrifice to this terrible creature, in the same way those who are in agreement with these evil entities of darkness have to supply them with humans to pacify them. One of these giant entities came to one cage, opened the door, took a little girl out and snatched her head in one bite. Then immediately I saw an angel of God take the soul of the girl from this terrible place into heaven. Many would ask, why is God allowing these terrible things to happen, especially to children? Why would He not judge these evil entities right there, and why is He allowing them to exist in the first place? It is not the will of Heavenly Father for these hybrids to exist in the first place. They are able to exist only with the cooperation of the human race with fallen angels by aborting their children and sacrificing them for them. Every woman who aborted a child performed a gift offering of the force of human life to the fallen angels who then are taking this force to create their own children of darkness. Millions upon millions of such sacrifices were performed by the human race. God has not judged these hybrids yet, only because out of love to the humans, in hopes that those who aborted their children will repent. Satan knew that by involving the human race he would could get away for a long time with this kind of abomination. But the time of grace is running out. There is an appointed time for the judgment of these hybrids. And when this day comes, those people who were involved in any way with the terrible act of abortion will be judged by God in the same manner as the hybrids. But there is a good news. God can forgive you. If you sometime in your life made an abortion or took any abortive pills, including birth control pills, you can repent right now and be forgiven. Heavenly Father, please forgive me for aborting my baby that was given to me by you. And please forgive me that I unknowingly or knowingly 
was involved in human sacrifice and the hybrid satanic program through abortion. Please break all curses that came into my life because of this sin. In the name of Yeshua, I break all unholy soul ties with these evil entities, which came to existence because of my sin. Heavenly Father, Please restore my soul and make me whole in my soul. I am asking for forgiveness to every unborn child whom I killed by my action. Heavenly Father, I plead you to cleanse me with the holy blood of Yeshua the Messiah. Jesus Christ from all my iniquities. Please make me white as snow in your eyes. I praise you Heavenly Father for your mercy and grace, for your forgiveness and love. Thank you Heavenly Father. Thank you Yeshua. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you shalom.